Alrighty, it's vlog time again here with another practice slash lesson session with my student Mike. Uh, my name is Martin Miller. I'm a guitar player from Leipzig, Germany. And uh, in case you don't know who Mike is and what his history is, uh, I uh, like to refer you to vlog episode number one. Uh, that is our first uh, lesson that we ever captured on tape and there's a fly in my room right now. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it basically tells the story. So to, to catch up very quickly, uh, Mike and I have been working uh, together for a couple of months. And our focus as of recent, uh, because he's very very te technical, uh, capable guitar player, our focus has been on the ear training aspect of uh, not only guitar, but, but music in general. So, uh, Mike, uh, would you please give me a little update on your practice progress? Sure. Um, I've been going over interval training, mm -hmm. um, mostly because I think uh, when we were doing chords, um, you were asking me something about you know the intervals, and I hadn't really gone through that before. Mm -hmm. and, and I've been using your Master Pro, and I've been going up through um, identifying seconds through sevenths. Mm -hmm. that so yeah, the, the week before, or the, the one and a half weeks before, we've been, we've only uh, been touching on all the intervals from uh, the root to the fifth, and so you extended your practice to sixth and sevenths. Yes. Uh, how's that been going? Um, I have to admit that sixth and seventh. Well, I think a major seventh is quite easy. Oh, and there's your fly friend. Um, <laughs> The right into the camera there. Uh, I tell you, it's my neighbor. It's my neighbor. There's a weird smell coming from my neighbor. It's really. Oh, it's really? really <laughs> if you see this, dude, sort your place out. It's freaking annoying. <laughs> I'm just assuming it's a dude. <laughs> dead bodies or anything. Yeah, it's like, it, honestly, people who come visit me and, and walk through my uh, walk upstairs to my place, they, they think somebody has died. Oh, God. Yeah. That's horrible. Uh, hence apartment living, that's why I, I like uh, having a house. Yeah, oh, yeah. So. But you live in the suburbs, so... Yeah. Yeah, um, I, I live in the... We're in the city, so... Exactly. Well, I live in a downtown area. I have uh, police, fire, EMS, motorcycles, uh, yeah. yeah, whatever you call it. I got, a, I, got anyway. a, I got a fire station right next to me, too, so I know what oh. you're talking about. <laughs> uh... Yeah, so I mean, I think, I think major sevenths are easy because the inverse of those is just a, um, a minor second, right? Um, they're just really a half step apart. Mm -hmm. uh, so I could, I could definitely notice that interval. Um, however, the difference between a minor six, a major six, and a minor seventh, um, I don't think my ear has been has gotten sophisticated enough to really without a doubt, you know, uh, distinguish between the three of those. I mm -hmm. found myself making quite a few mistakes. I don't know, it's just, just to me subjectively, the the sixth always reminds me, the character, just the character of it kind of reminds me of a third. Okay. But larger. But be, it's because... Uh, because they they kind of make up a triad. Like if you if you were to play these this set of notes, which is a major six, a G and an E, that to me sounds like an E major triad. And just like the C and an E, uh, sorry, a C major triad. And just like the the C and an E sounds like a C major triad. So for me, and of course, uh, a six is an inverted third. Um, yeah, I kind of think uh, think of it as kind of like a third with a larger gap, if you will. Okay. That's that's kind of what it sounds like to me. And it's that same issue we dealt with. You might think that uh, a minor six sounds sounds more happy, but that's that that's dependent on on where I place it. If I place it here, it sounds more happy than than. Uh, Let's say, let's say if I played a if I played a minor six here, both are minor sixes. But because I conditioned you to hear the C before, this one sounds kind of 
sad, even though it's a minor six. And this one sounds kind of uh, kind of happy, and it's also a minor six. So it's it's kind of very similar to the third, just very just subjectively speaking. Right, and I think yeah, that goes back to me. Um, I did have a little bit of difficulty with major and minor thirds uh, descending, you know, the ascending and harmonic together weren't that big of a deal. But when Ear Master Pro would play the notes in descending order, I would sometimes fail on the minor and major third. I mean, I think a thing I, I you might want to try is to seek out songs that you know really well, the the, okay. the, the, the melodies of songs or the theme of a song, and relate that to an interval. For example, let's say a perfect fourth could be Auld Lang Syne, if you know that. Yeah, and I never played that melody. I just did that on the spot because yeah. my ear and my fretboard knowledge are developed to a point that allows me to just just do that. So, but that would could be a, a good a good uh, crutch to remember a perfect fourth. Just as an example. Right. Or green sleeves. And another thing, I told you th this before, I would, I would very much recommend turning all effects off when doing ear training. Because I, I think you got a chorus on there right now. Yes. Would very much, uh, anything that could potentially irritate your ear, I would uh, definitely recommend to get rid of it. Okay, how's this? Yeah, it's a more pure sound. And also, if you can, try to seek out a piano and try it on a piano. It's an even purer sound than a guitar. And the intonation is more accurate, etc. So, just for the sake of learning. Yeah. Anyway, so shall I test you on, on on intervals a little bit? Why not? Let's try it. Let's last week we did. Last week I tested you from a static root, if you remember. Yes. So we'll start with the static root, and as we as we progress, I'm gonna start moving the root around a little bit. Okay. okay. Cool. Here we go. And we're gonna from. Uh, it could be anything from the seconds to sevenths, or. Yes. Okay. So, are you, are you are you cool with that? Do you feel yep. somewhat confident about that? Uh Yeah, more more let's say more or less. Okay. Let's let's see where it takes us. Who knows? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Any idea? Ballpark wise? Perfect fifth. Perfect fifth. Perfect answer. <laughs> okay. Move it on. I use car as a crutch, but um... Yeah, but only to check if your answer was correct. Yeah. You made up your mind before that. Yes. And that's that's so much faster than you've ever done it too. Oh. Can you sing both notes? <gasps> Sung beautifully, great. Here. Okay, moving on. That sounds like a minor seventh to me. I'm gonna play you a minor seven. Ah, that's a major seven. It's a major seventh. Nice, but you were in the ballpark. That's pretty good, man. You were in the yeah. ballpark. That, that's 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 pretty good. And not, not with you didn't require too much time thinking about it either. So, uh, one more from the root C. Okay, this time I'm gonna play you both at the same time. Okay. Is that cool? Yes. Okay. How about this? If you're not sure, you can start out by singing both notes. I can't, oh, sorry, can you sing again? I can't hear you right now because Skype is somewhat, somewhat blocking. Uh, no, the first note was not correct. 
Sing it again. Sorry, Skype is blocking. Is the same rune as before? Yeah, it's a bit sharp. Yeah, I've had that problem. Now it's a bit flat. That sounds like a perfect fourth to me. I'm gonna play a perfect fourth for you. Okay. Very different sounding, isn't it? Very different. And it's not even, okay. Is it bigger than a, what I'm playing, is it bigger than a fourth or is it? Yeah, I'd say it's a larger interval than a fourth. Yes. It's a larger interval than a fifth. Mm -hmm. So it would be, say I probably guess then it might, um, a major six. That's correct. Very nice. Yeah, correct. Very nice. Okay, cool. Um, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, take it to random intervals. Uh, not sorry, not random intervals anyway, but random root notes. Random roots. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. And pl I'm also allowing uh, intervals plus an octave, and you got to recognize that too. Okay. Okay. How about this? Um, Can you hear that okay? Yes. Good. Is it within an octave? Uh, you tell me. I'm not expecting you to sing this. It's very hard to sing. Yeah. Um. You you want to, if you want to try. I'm. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna play them separately just to make it a tad easier. either it's either a major seventh or a um, minor ninth nice so what do you think it is so one of the two answers was correct yes uh, um, and they do sound kind of similar I'm gonna play the other one you mentioned that is one and that is the other and they I agree they do sound very similar do sound similar um, I'm going to go with a minor ninth. Absolutely. Correct. Great, great job. Thank you. And I, I have to repeat this. We're talking about f f six weeks before this, you wouldn't be able to sing a note that I played to you. I wouldn't have a clue as even what to say to you. And now you recognize flat nines. It can still be faster. Anyone can be, but you're... you're uh, on just on the right path. If you head down that path, uh, the results will show uh, in relatively little time. Absolutely. I don't. I wouldn't say. It, you tell me, but subjectively, you don't. When you improvise, you don't feel a difference yet. I would. I would imagine. Not really, because the the connection between here and here. I've exactly. Still... That's exactly what I wanted to talk about. Is that yes. that how to in order to be able to draw from this knowledge in an instantaneous situation, you kind of have to be able to access it even more quickly. But you're well on your way. The rest is just practice, 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 practice. But you're doing the right stuff right now. Okay. You know, a, a YouTube channel you might want to check out. Anybody who knows me is I'm, I'm very hesitant about recommending uh, online slash YouTube tuition. But there's this guy, Rick Beato. Yep. who does some phenomenal content. I've, I've just started checking it out. and But uh, what he does is actually, that that's like his shtick, if you will, the whole ear training thing. He's taken that to such levels of, of absurdity that it's uh, pretty impressive. Yeah, I've, uh, I've subscribed, I think, more than a month or two ago. And I try to watch, but he, he puts them out so, uh, so rapidly. He puts out so many, it's just... 
Yeah, the thing is, his, his, the tempo of his is extremely high. So I w what I would not recommend, from at least from what from the little I saw so far, is I would not recommend to just watch it through. Yeah, that's it. it this is more of a case of rewinding, rewinding, rewinding all the time. And what? Wait, what did he just say there? Because pretty much any sentence he say, says has some very, very valuable piece of fact or information in it. So that's that's definitely something very cool. Okay, moving on. For uh, Sorry? professional Sorry. musicians, it seems like his his channel is, is kind of more for professional musicians almost. Um, but he has some beginners instructionals, but even they are. The thing is that makes them not so beginnerish is that they're at such a high pace. Yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty impressive. Yeah. I mean, He's a, he his content's fantastic though. I'd, yeah. I mean, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. In a world of quick and easy, he's definitely one of the highlights. Absolutely. Okay, I'm gonna give you another one. This time I'm gonna descend. We we had a couple compound ones. Uh, we had diets. We had a couple of ascending ones. I'm gonna give you a, uh, a descending one. How about this? Now, what I re would personally recommend to do, I would in my head now. I, I'm, I'm gonna give, give you this piece of advice. I would not try to measure the distance. Like, yeah, it's a large interval, but it could be any large interval. What I would think of, I would try to think of the lower node as the root node. Yeah. Even though it's the, the note I'm playing second. And then think of the bass note maybe an octave higher. Yes, that would be great. And if you could sing that, that that'll give you your answer. Okay. Or sing the the the, the soprano note. If you could sing if you could sing those two notes in the same octave, that, it'll be a dead giveaway. <laughs> you surprised me there. Man. I mean, you're really? getting better, but that was that was really good. Um, and now that's the easy part, man. Don't don't play. Don't play. Please don't play. Don't touch the guitar. Okay. <laughs> uh, darn it. See, this is where I have problems as, the, as on the descending. But if I invert... but you, but you, since you sing both of them, you can just think of the lower note as your. As you root, just stop for a second on the low, da, da, and then go back up. Then it's like you're you're having an ascending example. Catch my drift. Can you say that one more time? Yeah. So, as a little as a little tip, if you say you have problems with descending intervals, you just sang the two notes. Just hold that lower note for a second and then go back to the higher note and then it's like comparing an ascending interval. Okay, yeah, I tend to kind of invert it. Go, so, to, or maybe it wasn't quite right. Yeah. What's that distance between those two notes? Uh, sorry, I get screwed up. I'm thinking a perfect fifth between the two. Gonna play you a perfect fifth right. from the same top note descending right. uh, within an octave this time. So then it must be a perfect fourth? It is, yes. Yeah. Or in this case, it was an 11th, I, I guess. I think this yeah. is a thing, I don't know if, I, if, if, I don't know if this is online by now, but we, we did film another lesson and some of the video files seem to be corrupt. Uh, so if, if I can save it, I have by now uploaded this successfully to YouTube. If not, uh, let's do this exercise that we did in the last lesson where I'm gonna play you a chord and you're gonna name me the chord type and the top note. Okay. Okay. What about this? As far as the name of the, the top note? The the function of the top note. Ah. 
So I'm, you're going to name me the chord quality and the function of the top note, okay? Ready? Yeah. Not perfectly tuned. Just took it out of the case, but... What's that you're singing? Um, can you play the Is chord the, again? What, what, what part of the chord are you singing? Is that the root or the top note? I believe it's the top note. Mm -hmm. Can you sing the root note? Well, they're the same, I believe, right? That's what I'm thinking. I disagree. Sing the root note, just sing it. What's the lowest note you hear? I'm gonna emphasize it a little. Yeah, it's hard to hear on this. Okay, I'm gonna separate it from the chord. Minor third. Mm -hmm. You're singing correctly. Let me say that. The singing is right. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. so it must be a major third. I believe. Is that right? No. I uh... <laughs> sing it again. Okay, what is that? Since you got, since you got the first of all, tell me what chord it is. Oh, the quality of the chord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about a minor chord. Yes. Is there? Can you make that a bit more precise? It's correct. Maybe. It's a minor chord, but like minor seventh. Yes. Yes, it's a minor seventh chord. Uh, can you sing the notes of a minor seventh chord? I mean, that, that's a lot to ask. Can you sing the notes of the triad? Okay, I'm gonna play you what you just what you just sang. Does that? I'm gonna play it as a as a chord. Does that sound like a triad? No. There's like there's there's no specific harmonic information in this, right? It's very neutral sounding, very empty. It's because you didn't sing a third. Oh, I didn't. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't aware of that. Try again. Sing the the minor triad from the root note. Yeah, that's what I'm having. Okay, I did the, well, let me first say those two notes you're singing, they're part of the chord. But none of them are the third. That was the fifth, right? That was the first and the mm -hmm. fifth. Can I... Can oh, okay, we have a little problem here. So that's cool. You know, you, you, you made a lot of progress. It's two steps forward, one step back sometimes. And that's cool. <laughs> Now that's to totally fine. Yeah. Because you've done this kind of thing before. And something and that that's that's the thing with the ear, it can be very easily tricked and put off. And depending on what we did before and we we spend a lot of uh, focus and concentration on the previous stuff, it's perfectly normal. So we mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let me just say the the intervals you're singing are too large. Okay. Try it. 
try to think a bit smaller. I'm going to play you the chord again. No, don't don't use the guitar. No, 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 no. Not good. Not good. We want to get away from playing with our fingers and muscles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you play it again, the chord? Any as often as you want, because time does not matter when learning. Try something else. Can you sing a scale that fits this? I don't think I can. Like going up in very small increments? Can you try that? Mm -hmm. Now you're saying almost sing a triad. Almost? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is it? Oh, there's the triad. <laughs> So you kind of you kind of were in a headspace, and I think this is a bit of a theory. I think the reason you went for such large intervals because b before that I tested you on intervals plus an octave. Yeah. So now when you had to ask when I asked you to sing a third or even a scale when I asked you to sing sing thirds you sang perfect fours and perfect fifths when I asked you to sing a, a diatonic scale with whole steps and half steps you sang, sang a third I think that conditioned you to think th of things on a much larger scale than then then now all of a sudden a third seemed so unbelievably small in comparison it does and that's that's what I keep preaching about uh, with you is that this whole thing of emotions when judging intervals and those kind of things, you can, they can be so easily tricked. If you think in terms of big, small, happy, nice, not so nice, can be tricked. It always depends. A, a minor, a, a, a flat ninth sounds terrible, terrible. But I'm going to give you a flat ninth chord. That sounds pretty nice to me when you resolve it. When you key of G minor. That sounds pretty nice to me. This chord has a minor ninth interval in it. So it always depends on the context. And the context I gave you before tricked you. Yep. So uh, maybe now try again. What's the chord type and what's the top note? Top note. So it's a minor seventh. Mm -hmm. Sing the root note, sing the top note. Can you sing the bottom note again? Play the bottom note. Mm -hmm. So the top note is a perfect fifth? Yes, that's correct. That's that's uh, our final answer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One thing I would recommend you sing definitely when you hear those chords, play your when play yourself chords, simple four note chords, and then sing the triad, and if you can, sing the seventh. Okay. You sang the triad. Can you repeat that? Mm. No, no. Get get out of that zone. Think smaller. Yeah. Sharp, a bit sharp. Uh, 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 Play the chord again. You sing this. But I kind of want to hear this. Okay, I'm dropping too high in inner button. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you sing the seventh? Do another third jump. Just go for it. Almost. Now you're sharp again, but be very careful. A thing that that 
there, there used to be an awesome saying that uh, that one of our teachers in college had. This needs to disturb you. If you sing a major third over, and I'm playing you a minor minor seven chord, and you sing a major third, it it, it should disturb you. Yeah. It needs to be like a physical, like ah, <laughs> and you don't have that yet. Not yet, no, it doesn't. Because for me, when you do that, it's like. Yeah. It's but that's cool. It's gonna come over time. But uh, just I'm just gonna make you aware, aware of it. It's still a bit sharp, go a bit, 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 bit more flat. Very nice, very nice. And now at the seventh on top. Bit flat, a bit more flat. That was the fifth. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's that's tough for me. Um, I want to go. Hmm. That's another root note. Okay, I'm going to play it for you because we haven't done this. To be fair, we haven't done this. I just wanted to see where you're at and just completely, okay. completely put you on the spot. So I wanted to hear this. And you, you know what? When you did your fretboard training, you did those things, right? Because I asked you to play minor scales. Yeah. And whenever I ask you to play minor scales, I also urge you to play the arpeggios. Yep. So you played those sounds already, but that just goes to show your practice uh, was purely physical. Yep. So next time you play those things, you play those exercises, try them from a different angle. Next time you're only going to listen. Instead of blasting through here, let's say you do C Dorian. Instead of blasting through it, play it a bit more carefully. Listen to the quality of every note, and if you can, lay down a chord, record a loop with a, with a minor seventh chord or something, right. and go, mm, okay, that's my root, here's my third, here's my fifth. And then you're going to do the same thing with the minor seventh. And one thing you can recognize is how da 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 is how from the fifth to the seventh there is a minor third. Yeah. So the distance with from one note to the next within minor minor seventh or or seventh chords in general is always thirds diatonic thirds. So whatever third comes next within the scale. Okay. And so, and from the fifth to the flat seventh, it happens to be a minor third. But it's basically, you're, you're playing every other note of the minor scale. Playing the first note, the third, the fifth, and the seventh. Right. And you're skipping out to the two and the four and the six. So it's that stack of thirds that has a very specific sound. And next time you practice that, you just listen and you tell yourself, okay, root. Mm, okay, that's a minor third. Mm, all right, that's a fifth. Let's play that again. Mm, there's my flat seven. Da, 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 da. So don't just use it as a technical exercise. Like, pay real attention to the notes. And that's how you connect the name, root, the sound, is this, and the position on the fretboard to become one thing. Would you think uh, singing along like you were singing, vocalizing would yeah, help? Absolutely, well? absolutely. Okay. Because if, especially if you have a tendency to go sharp, the guitar t kind of tells you, nope. Yeah, Ear Master Pro tells me that too. It can't. Uh... Uh, what's the word? It can't um, box in where I'm at because I'm, I'm always going yeah, yeah, yeah. back and forth, sharp and flat. And it's like, what, what are you trying to do, dude? <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what do you want? Do you want F sharp or F or E? You know? I can't work like this. <laughs> e, what does he want? Yeah. <laughs> Pick up your mind. <laughs> yeah. No, that's cool. That's, it's, it's part of the process, man. Yeah. Don't worry. Don't worry. 
It's all good. Okay, no. new stuff. Let's just uh, manifest that right here. I want you to sing major seventh and minor seventh chords. Okay. Let's start with those two. But I want you to sing major and minor seventh chords arpeggiated. You play them to yourself and then you sing the notes in a row. We've done that sort of thing with triads, now it's time to add uh, the seventh. And don't worry, if you have trouble singing the triad, go back and sing a couple triads. Okay. Just, it's like, you, you just have to mix your practice program up a little bit. Your, your, your brain doesn't like, doesn't like uh, doing the same thing over and over. It kind of, you kind of lose focus. Yeah. So to keep yourself stimulated, mix it up, mix up the keys, mix up the inversions, mix up the type of exercises we had, triads, four note stuff, intervals, chords, all those kind of things. Mix it up a little bit to keep yourself interested. Okay. Uh, and also I want you to sing scales. We're going to start by singing the major scale. We haven't done that either and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, introduce you to that right now. So you want me to practice the seventh chords in Master on Ear Master Pro? Uh, uh, I don't know if Ear Master Pro is the right... Uh, or just the, do it on a guitar? Yeah, I would just play them to yourself randomly and then sing them carefully. And since you have... if you Be sure to hold those chords, because if you hold those chords you have a harmonic reference as to when you're sharp, when you're flat. Okay. And you can do it like this. You know what? I'm going to play this. And if I wasn't sure, I'm going to play along. The thing is, though, sometimes you have a tendency to just, when you play something on guitar, to just follow it. So to make it even more efficient, go sing first and then play and see if you were correct. So root, minor third, fifth, flat seven. So if you want to make it even harder for yourself, as for in the beginning, there's no harm in just singing along, but you want to get away from that too. Okay. To uh, so just the root form of the seventh chord, or yes, with inversions as well. Uh, I'm playing drop twos. Uh, actually, then though, this is a drop three. But I might as well play the drop two or anything. I wouldn't worry about that. It's not about, it's th that chord, no matter what inversion or what voicing it is, as long as it has the quality of a minor seventh chord, it's just supposed to give you an idea of the quality and then you sing the notes in a row. Okay. I can do that with any minor seventh voicing. It doesn't matter what order the notes are in. I can still oh. sing, I can still start on the root note and sing the notes in order. Okay. okay, another thing I want you to do now, uh, as I said before, well, no, let's try, uh, I'm, so, I'm so jumpy sometimes. Uh, my, my brain just gives me a thousand things to look no, into. Um, uh, it's because I love this stuff too, but do me, the, do me a favor, sing a triad on this. This is a major seventh chord, sing the triad. Do it again, please, Skype didn't catch it. Mm -hmm. I just got to find the root. Okay, here. I'm gonna, yeah, first find the root. Be, take your time. That's not the root. It, that note is in there, but I'm gonna make the sound a bit brighter to make it a bit easier. I like very dark, clean tones, but I tell you what you played. That was the triad, but. At the... Can you sing it in the in the root position? First of all, sing the root. Be definitive on the on what the root note is. Okay. It's not the root. I don't know. Let's see. I, can you? Can you just maybe maybe do the vacuum cleaner method and go? There it is. 
That's the vacuum cleaner method. Ah, there. <laughs> ah, I didn't. I never heard that one before. <laughs> it's it's a, a little invention of mine, I guess. Uh, <laughs> kind of just, yeah. I don't know. Uh, it doesn't work at all. Doesn't work. Okay, cool. It, it works better when you have a single note. Yeah. So try again for the root note, please. I'm gonna I'm gonna emphasize it a little. Yes. Now carefully sing the triad, please. Beautiful, beautiful. Can you sing the the, the whole four note chord? It's very high. What? Dare it, dare. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's very much in the ballpark. Please go for it. Yeah, I know. But as I get higher up, I tend to don't don't push so hard. Go, go very light. Round of applause, oh, round of applause. Everybody on the internet should be applauding you right now because that was pretty awesome, man. We never tried this. And maybe our little introduction to the world of minor seventh chords helped you get into the zone of stacking. You know how a triad is a, is a stack of thirds and you stack another third on top of that and you get a, a, a seventh chord. Yes. So yeah, you, you're such a quick learner. It's, it's a breeze. Thank you. Cool. Um, so that's a thing. Do that with the minor seventh and major seventh. And then we're going to go to dominant sevenths and minor seventh flat five and full diminished seventh, those kind of things. But for now, those two will be sufficient. Random keys too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, now we're going to sing a scale. That's something we need to try at least. Okay. I'm just writing it down on my notepad here. Sure. Okay. Um, have you ever tried that? Singing scales? Mm -hmm. Uh, other than kind of like, you know, the do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, um. Well, can you try that right now? Can you do that? Uh, boy, I could try. Um, do, uh, no. what you did saying an arpeggio <laughs> there which actually which is actually much harder but it's kind of funny again i'm conditioning you you just sang a, a dominant seventh uh <laughs> arpeggio try <laughs> yeah because because we just you know, you know it's funny when you know when we did the large intervals you couldn't sing the the or you couldn't recognize the tiny intervals and now we did uh the the third jumps and you now you're having trouble doing uh, seconds yeah so it's always that's why you need to exercise it all basically Dun, 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 dun. Okay, that's okay. That's that's a very vague impression of a scale. We got to be a bit more precise, and you might just want to take your guitar now. Yeah, because we're gonna use it to give ourselves notes. Okay, first thing I want you to do, and we're gonna start as simple as it gets. We're gonna play the C major scale in the A position. Okay. In, one, in only one octave. I wouldn't recommend that stretch pattern for now. Yeah, take something simpler. Yes, and now, first of all, the thing I, I told you about earlier, just sing along. Play it painfully slowly and sing every note along, and the guitar is going to guide you to the correct pitch. Okay, very, you're going to be very careful there. Yeah, take, you know what? You can even take your time. Just play the note first and then sing it, but listen to it first. Uh, root major second major third perfect fourth perfect fifth you got a nice vibrato there too <laughs> major six major six 
Don't worry about the voice. We're not. We're not. We're not in a vocal lesson here. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, I'd probably feel. Uh, your girlfriend probably would be failing me. <laughs> She's not here, so don't worry. <laughs> Major seven. Tell you, can you, you can ease up the voice? Major seven. Okay. What would you say? Major, major seventh. Just sing it very lightly. Major seventh. Road. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. Now play the f the s the first three notes. Play them to you. Don't sing along yet. Just play those three notes in succession. Okay. Play it a couple more times. And listen to it. Like, really listen to it. Okay, now speed it up a just a little. Once more, a bit faster. Okay, now... Uh, now uh, sing it. Don't play. Don't play. Just sing. Okay, but bit, bit bit flat on the first note. Very nice. Great job. Great job. Now play the first five note of the scale. Speed it up a little because, yes, it's great to hear those notes individually, but you also want to perceive it as one entity. Sometimes it's easier to remember the sound of something if it's played a bit quicker and it sounds like one thing. Okay. So play it in a tempo like something that is very singable still. But that sounds like, sounds like a thing, like a line. Now sing that, please. Almost done. We're almost done, dude. Very nice. And again, you, you people saw it. You couldn't. You could not. You could not even begin to sing a scale. No. And now you're more than halfway through. Okay. Now play the f all. Let's play all seven notes now. Start slow. Speed it up. And you can finish off with an octave if you're cool. Yes, nice. Repeat it a couple more times until you feel confident and then sing the whole thing. Okay, I'm gonna play you a harmony that keeps your intonation in check. Because whenever I play something, Skype blocks the audio. Can you just play the C major chord yourself? Just uh, give you a guiding harmony. Give yourself a guiding harmony. Yes. Now sing the C major scale on top of that. You gotta nail that first note. That first note is gonna be what you compare everything else to. Everything that comes after that is gonna be out of tune if the first note isn't isn't fully there. Okay. Yes. So try to try to nail that first node really.
Now you have your flat, very flat right now. Am I? Play the scale, okay, play the scale again, then play the chord. Thin out the voice, thin it out. Just sing like an angel. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 uh, oh. Play the chord, don't forget. Da, da. That's f da, uh -huh. da, yeah. Da, yeah. Great. Da, oh, that's Lydian. Da, 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 now a half step. I'm sorry? Now a half step, be very careful. There goes a half step. Oh. Half step. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go down a little. on the voice go easy Bravo, there it is, there it is. Nice, I bet your brain is cooking right now. Yeah, that's, uh, that's tough, that was not easy. After a while it becomes so easy. It's not perfect, but that's something I would recommend you to do. So you do it like we did, we, we, when you practice this at home, you play along to the, to the, to the guitar and then you hold down a chord and you sing it without the guitar. Okay. Can we try this with a minor scale? Now we'll just write it down and then we're gonna try it with a minor scale. Major and minor scale. Mm -hmm. yeah. Covering all the essentials here, it's good. Singing along with a chord as a uh, backing almost. Right? Yeah, as a reference. It's very important. Backing reference. Okay. Oh. Now, yeah, play a C minor chord and then play the, th do it the same. Play the first three notes, play the first five notes, and then play the whole scale. Okay. And sing along, of course. So in this case, it would be you want the, this like the C natural minor or Dorian. Yeah, let's go for a natural minor. So play yourself the first three notes a couple times in different tempos, and then sing them. Just listen to them maybe a little bit. Just don't, don't sing yet, just play it a couple times and just listen. Just absorb it. Okay, now sing it. No, don't play it, just sing it. Great job, do the same with five notes. 
and then sing it. This well, should, as I said before, this should disturb you. Yeah, that did because that was... Uh, it did, right? It hurt. It that hurt. was a major third, not a minor third. Yeah. Being self-analyzing yourself like a boss. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, uh, Good, dude, so good. Very, I'm very happy. Great job. And then the next set of notes. Mm -hmm. and, and you can complete it with the octave. Awesome though, because the, the the voice is telling you to do something different, but but your 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 ears and your brain tell you no. Nope. nope. So and when that happens, it's just a matter of time till your voice till your voice stops doing that thing. Yep. It's good to know I'm self correcting at least. Hopefully. That's awesome because that's one of the that's one of the biggest things when, which is why I always ask you to, please practice in front of me, as if I weren't there, because I need to know. How you're doing it, where the mistakes are, but now you're starting to self, uh, self reflect on what you're doing, and that's that's gonna maximize your practicing efforts. Yep, most minor second from that yeah it seems it seems to be the health steps that bug you yeah so I tend to jump yeah they're 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 so small they're such small intervals you sometimes forget how tiny they are yeah and it, I tend to overshoot a lot of times so. yes but you know that and that's that's the first the, the, the that's the key to making it better yep No, you're just going whatever. Be very careful. Oh. Train that, play along with the guitar for a little bit. Those those okay. three notes. Do that with the whole scale now. Just sing along. Train yourself. and then sing it. Nice. 
Now do it without do it without playing along. Just play the chord. <laughs> okay, sing that the, that the, the second and the third a couple of times. Without a guitar, with, but with a chord. Without, uh, sorry, without playing melody lines along. Just play play the minor chord along, please. Okay. Just the uh, that uh, second and minor third. Da, 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 da. Yeah, you're a bit sloppy on that. It's not quite this. It's not quite that. Okay, but it's great. We, we, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're gonna drop this here. You know what exactly what to do. Um, and the great thing is, we found something that you can't do. That means you're gonna be able to do it next time. Isn't that great? You'll have a learning effect. Um, and you, you're well aware that the health steps are what's bugging you. It was the same when you sang the, the major scale, like, da, 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 instead of da, 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 da. It's always the health steps that catch you. Is that right? Yeah. Seem, seems to be the case. Yeah. And that's yeah. totally cool, and it's perfectly normal. So don't you worry. Okay, then I want to get to that last thing we talked about. Oh, the uh, the legs. Yes, uh, you sent them via mail. I haven't I haven't checked that, but uh, I would just say just play them for me. I, that's that's more important than for me seeing them written. I just want you to hear them, because to to catch people up a little bit. Uh, last week I wanted to demonstrate. Um, oh, we don't we don't need the sheet. Just play them for me, please. Okay. Uh, last week I asked you to, because I wanted to show you some uh, how how you how I'm able to recreate phrases phrases in an instant through my ear training, and the thing was I asked you to play pentatonic phrases. The thing is you had no vocabulary of phrases. It was all very technical stuff like you know, but not you didn't have anything under your belt such as. Or, or even simpler. That's a phrase, you know? Something memorable, something almost vocal. Um, well, blues is not that vocal in the lines. It's, it kind of is, but not as much as, as some other melodies. It's, it's Blues lines are kind of their own thing, but still something memorable, something catchy that somebody can repeat that sticks with you right away. So you need, as a guitar player, I mean, the blues is such an essential part of guitar playing. And okay. it's, it's kind of a crime not to have a couple of blues phrases down. Also to just, not just so you play blues, you, wanna, you don't wanna be a blues player and that's cool, but just to understand how you make up phrases, how you connect phrases, how you come up with logical musical statements, and the, the pentatonic is a very great device for that, to just get into that. So please, those, those six phrases, or, or however many they are, please, can you just play them for me? Yeah, um, so the first one was... Um... Aha, nice, play it again. Can can you can you can you give it a specific rhythm? Sure. Uh, like play kind of like uh, like a swing type. Yeah. Thing. Cool. Cool. Sure. Um, I'm trying to think here. Okay. There there is a lot of work to be done here. The phrase itself, the phrase that you made up is cool. The execution is a bit lacking. Okay. First of all, I would not worry too much. Watch, keep. Okay, A. Okay, that's your phrase, right? I wouldn't be so technical. This is not very bluesy. 
is shreddy right. or a bit too, almost classical. You don't need to do that. Do a slide or do a slide up here. Let's just do something different, something a bit more practical now. Well, let's play that again, it sounded great. Yeah, and, and articulation is very important. Da, 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 ba, ba, yeah, da. Don't hold that note for, for too long. Try to make it uh, not short, but broad. Okay. Like portato, you would say. Da 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 bop. It's bop. Da 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 da. Shorter. It's 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 portato. Read about the term portato. It's not short. It's not long. It's broad. Bop. So. But da da da. Try to, to use language to understand articulation. Da 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 da. Please sing da 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 da. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Da Yes, but not so technical. Not not da 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 da. It's not 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 on a. It's not as precise. You, the, the the point where the note stops is not on on the beat perfectly. It's da 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 da. Yes, that sounds much more musical. Now play it like da 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 da. Okay, timing is very shaky. Try to try to maintain a solid time. Okay. Ooh, that sounded nice. Was it? So much more. You played the same set of notes before. At the beginning, you didn't sound so great. Now you sounded great. <laughs> I guess my ear still must be made of wood because I just, <laughs> just I didn't notice the difference. Okay, no, I'm going to tell you how you played it before. It was like this. Okay. First of all, the timing was off and the articulation was off. That's how you played it before. And now you played it like... It'd be a bit more <laughs> daring to play that high note, da, 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 a bit shorter. That sounded good. Uh, nice. Uh, okay. You hear that difference? Yes. You want? You're gonna do me another favor. Another homework is you're gonna you're gonna record those phrases. Okay. And you, so you can listen to your different takes, and then you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna do me a favor. You're gonna send me your worst take, and you're gonna send me your best take. Okay. So we can hear the difference. Okay. And I want it to be against a click. A backing track, just a click. A click or a backing track, I don't care. But it has to be. It has to have a, a reference of time. Okay. It can be a click, a drum loop, anything. Any certain tempo, or it doesn't matter. What, whatever you think the phrase works best with. Okay. Uh, against a click or a track or or backing. I do have band in a box. I don't know how useful you use that, to, but yeah. Yeah, that works. Okay. Cool. Now, next phrase, please. Next phrase. But I by got. the way, the phrase was beautiful. That was a great blues phrase. You like that one? Yes, okay. I like. I like. That's exactly what I wanted you to do. Okay. Next phrase. Um. Oh, ooh, that was that was great. <laughs> Play it again. Yeah, that was awesome. Play it again. That was cool. That especially, I, I would even make them a bit easier. This could be the first. Just that one. And then you have that. This this the beauty of the blues is how how it, it sh shifts between major and minor. You see how I start at the first? And then, and then do that microtonal bend. Pat Metheny does that, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah lots yeah. of players do it. All the blues players do it, Pat Metheny does it too, sure. 
But you know that this this deliberate this deliberate modification of pitch. It's so cool. I can do it with a bend or a, like a like a very short slide. And I'm doing the same here with that note. Oh, sorry. Okay, articulation. Ba da bum ba bum ba ba ba. Sing it. Da da bum da bum da 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 Bingo, that's how you're gonna play it. Yeah, so that's another part I think is, um, that's one another big hole in my playing is the rhythm. Being able to, you know, um, you know, play, play, play with rhythm, I guess. Yeah, that. but that, that's, that's kind of a specific feel. I don't know if, if you, I, would, I would call it rhythm, it's articulation. articulation. Rhythm is more like where you place the notes, and articulation is how you attack the notes, and how you end the notes, when you end the notes specifically. Not on a, on a, on a larger level, like, oh, that's an eighth note, but... Yeah, but yes, it's an eighth note, but where do you end the eighth note? Do you end it here or do you end it slightly earlier or a little earlier or a little longer? That kind of thing. Yeah. It's, it's like a, I'm trying to draw an, draw an analogy to, to, to language. But if you, if you, all you ever do is talk like this, then it's pretty boring if all the words you're saying have the same length. Isn't that a bit weird? But if you want to make a strong point, you use articulation. Right? Yes. It yeah. just didn't know. No. You said yes. You didn't say yes. I am a robot and I talk like this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's the same in music. And that's why I, this thing. That sounds sterile, but. And that sounds kind of cool. And I would reduce those phrases, make them even simpler. Okay. Because the, the smaller the chunks, the more easily you can adapt them and absorb them. All right. Yeah, I try to. So I try to. Impress okay, we're running it. We're running low on time here. Can you just do one last phrase and we'll call it call it yeah. a night? Okay, I'll do one that's a bit simpler. But again, those licks are in the. Uh, I did send you as an email. So. Mm -hmm. About this one. Mm -hmm. Play again. Uh, I don't think it quite resolves. Okay. Because it it has on the lesson. Here's the one, right? It's not bad though. It's not bad. Is that it? Can you play again? Yep. It's a bit... I know you're a fusion nut, but it's a bit fourthy. Okay. The, like the sus. It, it's a good phrase, though. I'm, I'm just really nitpicking now. It was kind of borrowed from Guthrie Govan, actually, on the... Okay. I think that blues fusion, uh, what was it, the, the Glary Carlton track, I think? He, he does something simpler. Okay, why don't you go? That's a bit more. Okay. That that's a bit more. I don't know. A bit more catchy sounding, just to keep, just to find it. Use that stupid term. Okay, one, two, three, four. Uh. Doesn't that sound a bit nicer then? That, that to me doesn't sound too great. Uh. Yeah. Nice, that sounds good. 
And it was well articulated. It had a nice swing to it. Can you do it again? Count yourself in, please, and play it. One, two, three, four. Oh. Okay, again, probably a couple of times go. Inconsistency there, but that's fine. Try it again. Okay, do me a favor. Keep it, keep it going. So play the lick in rep in succession, but uh, in repetition, but keep the the beat going in the meantime. So. Uh, so. Now I'm going late back. Keeping the pulse. Don't play long, please. I'm playing around with the time now. I'm I'm, I'm having some some fun. I'm trying to get some motion into this. So that's something you should try: is to keep that that timing going even though you're not playing, you're waiting for the lick to start. That doesn't mean the pulse is deviating. Okay. Uh, can you try that one last time? And I think I might have discovered uh, a little area of weakness that we can be working on next time. Okay. Oh, nice. Okay, you're, 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 the feeling of the, of the pulse is inconsistent as soon as you stop playing. You kind of do a couple of five fours in there or something. There's a couple of rests that should be longer than needed. Others are not long enough. So that's like that internal clock thing. We can work on that a little bit. And also your body language when you do that is, is very tense. Yep. Just try to be a bit more in the music. I know it's easier said than done, but try to to move accordingly to the music. You know, the, the, the swing feel is not, it's more like swing. So make your body swing. That's why they call it swing. Should be your, your limbs and your, should, they should be loose, you know? Yeah. You can't be tense and play swing. Yeah. You're probably concentrating more on mechanical. Of course, of course. Sex playing rather than yeah, what's going on? That's and and also a, a, again, nitpicking. I'm, I'm I'm a pain in the ass sometimes, but you're paying me to be that, right? So, <laughs> so I'm, you, I'm anal about my playing. Cool. If you, if you if you if you like that, then I'm going to tell you what you did. You did kind of that muting thing, and that's fine. But it didn't sound like too intentional. Voice that can you scat? Can you scat that phrase? Scat, articulated. Scat. I'm not, not sure. I'm quite following you. Badu weeda, badu weeda. That's why scatting is so important because it gets you the articulation. Badu weeda, badu weeda. You know that I think ba do we at that's a that's another portato note. Ba do what data? I, I I don't play it the same all the time. I I, I mix it up, but I, I use my voice to tell myself how to play it. Hmm. And my voice doesn't go ba do wa da wa da ba ba ba. It goes ba do ba da ba ba da. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, I think my my, yeah. my camera is full. 
Oh, that's cool. We're done anyway. So, yes, articulation is going to be articulation and timing is going to be th be a thing we're tackle more seriously. For now, um, we're going to do a lesson next week if that's cool. I, I would recommend that. Um, Definitely. Yeah. So do the ear training thing. Practice those. Record those blues phrases for me, please. And I'm going to critique them. Okay. And record a couple bad ones, and then record a couple really good takes too. Okay. And compare them, because because you should you should find out what you like about a certain take and what you don't like about another. Yeah, then, I think the one thing I find is that over time I look back, and I said, "Boy, that's crappy." So maybe that. That's a sign of improvement. improvement. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's a sign of improvement. It's not that. I'm crappy. I just no, no. It's just that for your standards now, your standards keep improving, and your ear keeps improving. Right. That's why. Right. Very nice, uh, Mike. I want to thank you again for volunteering. You're a true champion. It takes it takes an unbelievable amount of balls to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. No problem. I. I, I you know, it, it's it's definitely helped. Um, I've gotten a lot of people on Facebook uh, hitting me up and. YouTube as well, so I haven't seen anything. Yeah, I mean the, the response to the first lesson has been fantastic, and we should really keep it like that. We should be supporting each other, not putting each other down. Um, so that's been really cool of you guys. Uh, I'm very happy to for for the positive feedback we got. It means we're just going to be doing doing more of this, which I think is is very awesome, very interesting. Um, of course, I cannot ask you guys as to what topics we're going to cover here because that that will depend strictly on my student, <laughs> as it should be. But uh, I think it's 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 very cool that we document this journey of yours. I think, and I don't think anything quite like this has been done before. Yeah, who knows? In a year from now, it might be. Uh... It might be a trend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping maybe like. All of a sudden, I say, "Yeah, guess who? Guess who called me? Jam Track Central or something?" All right? <laughs> no, I don't have any. I don't. I don't, I don't have any pretense. That shouldn't be. That shouldn't be the goal. Because I tell you what, the the only goal should be self improvement. Yeah. For now. Yeah. That that's why you 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 if if you're trying to be uh, famous or be on uh, you, that X or Y YouTube channel channel you're not doing it for the right reasons for now it's only about discovery exploration self-improvement yep. and just having a good time learning yep absolutely but the ultimate goal is virtuosity for me that's uh hopefully i can get to that and that that's well. what gives you motivation and that's great yeah and it's an intrinsic goal because you don't want to be virtuoso because you want to impress people or you want to make money or you, you want to be a virtuoso because that's how you feel you need to be able to play to express yourself. Exactly. I always felt that too. Uh, when I was younger, I felt that I had to have technical facility to express my ideas. Yep. You get the people who, who say, oh, it's so much harder to say something with one note than with a thousand and that's bullshit. It's just different. It's just a different way of saying something. Yep. And it's beautiful when it's done with one word. And sometimes it's beautiful when it's like it's like a poem with rich vocabulary and the most most elaborate expressions possible. And that's that can be something like shredding. Shredding can be also something very dumb. Yep. <laughs> Let's not kid ourselves. It can be very stupid, but it can also be profoundly beautiful. And yep. intense and even, even gracious. Like if you listen to classical pianists playing certain pieces, it's not always intense and fire and heavy and pushing. Sometimes it's very gracious, like a yep. ballet dancer instead of a of a sprinter. Right. So yeah, right. but we're, we're deviating way too much here. I mean, I don't think blues players have the corner on feeling or soul, right? That's Absolutely the, not. They're, because they're, they have yeah. it, but. There are other players that have it too, right? So absolutely, it doesn't yeah. matter what style you choose and how many notes you play. That's it's that is, is no uh, criteria for quality. It's just a different thing. Yep. Cool. Absolutely. Finished off with some philosophy here. Uh, I want to thank you guys in the audience. Uh, please leave comments. Please subscribe. Give us some thumbs up, Mike. Uh, if they want to check you out, where can they do? Where can they do that? 
Yeah, um, I have a Mike Smithson guitarist uh, Facebook uh, page and uh, my Mike Smithson one word and on YouTube. Uh, you look me up. Um, I have some eh, so so quality <laughs> videos. Uh, Don't be like that. Don't be like that. <laughs> it's, <laughs> I'm recording with a with a simple webcam and a USB mic. I don't have any uh, um, exotic, uh, you know. Uh, production equipment, but maybe that that will change if uh, you know if if I get more subscribers on YouTube or whatever. But sure. Uh, sure. And anyway, yeah. please leave us some questions too. Gonna do a, be doing a Q and A type thing very soon. Um, I need some questions for that. Leave comments. Mike and I are both checking the comments. We can have a healthy discussion going, and I hope every one of us is gonna profit from this in one way or or another. We're just trying to make the guitar world a better place for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. See you. Bye-bye.